Luke, thank you so much, brother. It's a pleasure. Happy to be doing my first ever in-person podcast. Fire. Um, it's funny how we set this up. I messaged you saying, hey, do you want to come on the show? You said, yeah, if it's in person. And then I forwarded you a tweet that I tweeted 15 minutes before reaching out saying, anybody in Miami, who should I interview for my first episode? And I think less than five days later, we're here, man. So yep. thank you so much for giving me of the course, opportunity. Bro. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. I know you've been on a few podcasts, so we're not going to sit here and, and go through the whole story, but we'll give some highlights. You grew up in a rough environment, um, mm -hmm. came from what you could say is nothing. So my first question for you is, you had a tough upbringing. How much of that do you attribute to your success so far? Everything. Absolutely everything. Like my biggest advantage is, is mental, I think, over other people. Um, I saw Joe Rogan say this yesterday. He said it's really fucked up, but everyone he's met that has a mental edge or is mentally tough in his life has gone through some like crazy stuff. Um, so I attribute everything to it, to be to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, I would say I've I've noticed the trend too. It's like when you when you see a lot of people do podcasts or you see people have this come up story, it's typically from a a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. And most people, like you just said, attribute a lot of their success. And I think it comes down to mental. How mentally would you say you stack up against other people? Because you're a very confident guy, so I'm surprised if you don't say you're the best. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not the best because there's a big pond. You know, <laughs> I'm. A, I'm a little fish in a big pond. Um, but I have. I'll say this. I haven't come up against something yet that I wasn't able to beat. So we'll say that. But humbly, I'm. I'm a little fish in a big pond. Yeah, love it. You've started a few companies now. You're a huge sales guy. That's where you, you really got all of these skills, and, and now you've turned that into a business. Mm -hmm. But I want to start at the beginning of the journey. What was it like when you were fending for yourself? I know you went out to California with your brother, and you guys were kind of hustling it out. Yeah. How much of that moment comes back now full circle to like the person you are now, Luke? Well, that was so, I mean, like hustling and, and, and just like, first getting into sales was one thing, but going out to California that, that two weeks or week, however long it was, was the thing that made me realize I didn't want to be a sales rep anymore because there was, so basically we get flown out. Um, we were told when we like put up, taken care of, or I'm sleeping on this like crusty mattress <laughs> and this like long beach, is it long beach? I think seal beach or long beach or whatever, Some California. Beach horrible like not a good spot and i was like man this sucks and and we were like this is the company that's taking care of us like fuck this so the boss of that company was not good to his team and and that was where i started to realize like you know what like fuck this guy and, and i i would i always compare myself i just this is a natural thing and i was thinking like why is this guy in charge of all these people and he's like treating his team the way he does like i could totally do what he does like what is he doing that i can't do and then we came home and then that's when I was like, yeah, we, we got to build something of our own. Um, but yeah, it was played a big part. The, the sucky stuff usually <laughs> has the biggest part to play. Yeah, because I think you start to kind of realize too, like what you'd want, what you don't want. And I, I would say I can relate with you from that aspect of I always compare myself to mm -hmm. somebody above me or somebody who I want to be like, what are they doing that I'm not doing? What do they have that I don't have? And it's funny because you typically realize that it's nothing. Like yeah. you could do exactly what they're doing. You could be achieving what they're achieving. It just comes back to mindset. Mm -hmm. And I know you're just a huge advocate for that. And I, I want to keep it on the topic of, of you and your success and mentally. At what point did you realize you had what it took to be successful online? Because you've done a great job of promoting yourself. You do a great job of of being active on all these different socials and capturing a lot of this big audience. Mm. That's not easy. Like I, I've quickly realized how hard, tedious, like it, it's not simple to just post and be active online. People think it's fun. It, mm -hmm. It's not that fun. No. I don't know if you've ever tried to schedule like 15 reels, if anybody listening, it's not cool. It's not fun. Yeah. When did you know that you had what it took to be successful in the online world? Um. I mean, I, I, I believe I can be good at anything if I, if I really like want to be and I've got to dial in and get focused. But I mean, I've just known since I've kind of got into business, like if you want to make a lot of money, you have to have a good brand. You know what I mean? Like I was reading um, like Crush It by Gary V when I was like 18, Grant Cardone books. Um, I read, read Dan Bozerian's book and his whole thing was like, 
you can have all this money, but the thing that everyone with money wants is fame, and you can't buy fame. And, and it's it just sort of hammered into the thought of like, I've got to, I've got to blow up, you know. Um, so it was just that mindset. So went hard on Twitter. That was the first one, and figured that out. Twitter. I think if you can crack Twitter, you can crack anything else because it's a very intellectual kind of place. And now I don't, I don't really like post the same stuff I used to. So I don't grow as much. Yeah. It's not exciting, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just knew I had to do so if I wanted to reach the levels that I wanted to reach, you know? Yeah, and you made an interesting point there. Are you, like, really interested in fame? No, Are you somebody I who could care less, okay. but, but I'm smart enough to know, like, okay, how big do I want to be? This big? Okay, cool. What do I have to do to be that big? Probably have to have a lot of eyeballs. So yeah. it's, it, the, it's the game. It's the name of the game, and, and it's, I think it's interesting, especially where we are right now in Miami, mm -hmm. where – People look famous. People are famous, and a lot of the times, like I think you mentioned in one of your here um, in one of your interviews, don't meet your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> because sometimes it's a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, yeah. Most so, most of the ones that I've met have been uh, lackluster to say the least. And and why? Why do you think that? Because you're not the first person that said that. It's a pretty common thing. What do you think is the reason that you're well, let people, down, or other people are let down? People pr portray the best parts of themselves online naturally. So when you meet people, if and and some people I meet are they're awesome, right? Like a common thing that like we joke about is everyone thinks I'm a dickhead like <laughs> online, but then they meet me and they're like, bro, you're so nice, and I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like it's this weird perception, but the opposite is true for a lot of people. It's like, oh, I'm this like awesome nice guy, and then you meet him and you're like, man, that guy's a dickhead, like. I don't want to hang out with that guy or he's not as good at this as he said he was, or he actually doesn't make the money he says, whatever it is. Right. Um, so people portray their best selves online. And then when you meet them, you usually see reality. Yeah. And I wonder like how much, cause I think it's funny. Like I heard you mention that on a few other podcasts, like people think I'm a dickhead. I come off as a dickhead, but then people meet me and it's completely different. And for the camera, I did not think he was a dickhead, but now that I meet you, like, <laughs> I'm going to say you don't seem like the person you would see when you're watching the videos, but mm -hmm. as somebody else who like gets branding, gets marketing, like I know what you're doing it for. Like you're looking for those eyeballs. You know what it takes to capture an audience. Mm -hmm. And I think some people are intimidated by that too. Like people don't know what they want. They're, they're still trying to figure it out. And they see somebody like yourself, you know exactly what you want. Your head's down. You're going for one goal and one goal only. And that's to be successful. Mm -hmm. Why, why do you think people are intimidated? Like, why do you think people can't grasp, like, seeing somebody like you driven, motivated, being successful? Like, where does all the hate come from? Well, I th it's like a, it's a human nature kind of thing, right? Like, you always, I don't, I don't know if the word is lash out or you always don't like what you are not or what you want to be that you don't think you can be. So that's why, like, people, everyone famous or any, anyone with, with big audience or whatever, you get a lot of hate and it's because uh there's a drake song is uh oh fuck what is the words i'm a reflection of all your insecurities and do not disturb right it's like that principle and i'm not saying like oh everyone wishes they could be me like that's not what i'm saying yeah. at all but when you have guys like for example i saw this guy that was like i posted a picture of this russian girl from mykonos right uh -huh. beautiful beautiful girl and then this guy I just like get a like a at or whatever and I see it. It's a picture of my ex-girlfriend and this Russian girl. And the guy's like making fun of like how they look. And it's like, oh, like Luke has a type. I'm like, yeah, if my type is like beautiful, like model girls, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But but like, and then like other people are like, bro, are you stupid? Like, what are you talking about? The point of them even tweeting that is immediate insecurity. He has some sort of insecurity about women or about getting girls or whatever it is that seeing me post one or post with a girl or whatever that is attractive triggers that and they immediately jump on their phone and tweet that. It's a lot of it's a lot of action to pull your phone out, tweet something, especially let alone have a old camera roll camera roll photo of me <laughs> deep in your camera roll. It's a lot of like action to go out of your way and it's triggered by insecurity. So I mean everything is like that. Um so it is what it is, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy and there's good things you highlighted there. All of the steps that that person had to take to think that they got under your skin or upset you, and, yeah. and in reality, it didn't matter at all. And now they're getting made fun of on a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> and like, just imagine if those people put that same energy into actual good things. Yeah, like, I feel like because something I talk about all the time is I think our generation has forgotten a little bit about how hard it is to start a business. Mm -hmm. Like, you can people think. Oh, like I see people do it online. Like I could just snap my fingers and do it. And it is hard. 
but it's not impossible. And if some people just channeled some of the negative energy that they put into the stupidest things, Mm -hmm. like even me, I don't have a huge following. I have like 1600 followers on Twitter. I get hate and like, I barely post stuff. And it's funny. Like, I'm like, I can only imagine someone like yourself with bigger followers. I've gotten some crazy stuff. It's, it's just like an extrapolation of like how our generation is like, bro, people are mentally damaged. Like we had a guy that we, we like use this call as like a joke. Um, you know, the, I'm going to send a bomb to your house guy, Jacob. You remember that? So this guy books a sales call with us and literally maybe we'll clip it up here so you guys can see it. Books a sales call with one of my reps and literally is like looking down at his phone all angry. And uh, his name's Kishin, my my sales rep. And he's like, hey, brother, what's your name? Where are you from? And he's like, "Uh, Noah. And then Tyler was like, or or Kishin's like, okay, cool. Well, how's your day? And the guy just starts screaming at his phone. He's like, I'm going to send a bomb to your house and kill you. You fucking hear me? He's like screaming at the phone. And he's like, if I see your ads again, I'm going to kill. He was so serious. And like, bro, everyone is mentally ill. Like <laughs> people are sad. People are upset. People are angry. And they don't know where to, to, to what to do with it because of just everything that's going on. So it goes online and they just send it. Like I get it on my ads. I get it on uh, just normal reels, whatever. But you got to just like understand. You got to feel bad for those people, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, like you said, it's so much to go out of your way and just... I booked like, a sales call hate, just to freak out. Yeah, yeah. Like you had to go through our whole funnel, <laughs> our whole ads, our whole process. Like, buddy, you're going to see more ads now because yeah. you, you clicked on our funnel, right? Yeah. So like it's it's sad, but it just comes with, I think, building a brand and, and doing things that that are kind of uh, not even controversial, but they just grab attention. There's always going to be good and bad with that. Yeah, I just think people overall don't like to see people succeed, which is extremely unfortunate yeah. because... I wish just people would treat it as motivation and not so much a like anger thing. Like, Mm -hmm. why are you mad that somebody else is doing a great job? Like, I never got that. It always, it always motivated me or it, or it made me mad in a competitive way. Not I'm mad that you're winning, but I'm mad that you're beating me kind of thing. And and that's the way people should take it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the sales side of you too. Like just constantly driven, wanting to get better, like wanting to continue to strive for more. And unfortunately there's, lazy people and i would say something that i have stood by for the longest time now and i speak on my generation our generation people have become so short-sighted like it's insane it's what can you do for me now Mm -hmm. this decision what does it mean for me in the next two hours what does it mean for me in the next eight hours you can't live life that way like everything you do is for what's coming later but I I can't fathom how people can think that way. Like when I'm making decisions, I'm thinking eight months, two years out. Like, all right, this is going to set me up for this. I'm doing this because this is my end goal. And I guess maybe, maybe I'm ignorant and like, well, no, that's the right way. Like, um, I think it was Amazon. Maybe I I read in one of those Bezos books. They only make decisions on a, like a minimum of like a 10 year timeline, because if you're making decisions that are 10 years in the future, it has to be the right decision or else your whole 10 years is me- messed up. <laughs> but if you make decisions in a one month or one week or a today kind of timeline, you're, you're not you're not really like putting that much um, emphasis on that decision because if it's wrong, oh, well, I have a day tomorrow. I have next week. I have next month. But if you plan long ahead and you actually do it the right way, maybe you don't get like the shiny results immediately, um, but that's how you get a lot further. But that's the separation between the people that win and the people that win for a year and then they crumble and you never hear from them again. Yeah. I mean, I just couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's because we both are kind of on the same mental wavelength, but it's just like, be very intentional about what you're doing on a day to day basis, because the micro little things that you do have a much bigger effect And everybody thinks like, uh, I could just do this and then I'll be fine tomorrow or I'll be able to do this the next day. But you're not realizing that you're actually getting that whole thing, get 1% better every day. I don't think anybody ever talks about getting 1% worse every day, falling into a rut, getting out of a routine. Like I I just experienced this personally. I was crushing it two years in a row. I got back into reading. I was back in the gym. Like I was feeling really good about myself. Then I started my W-2 and I work from home now. Mm -hmm. I've seen myself decline over the last six months because I've gotten out of my routines, got, and I know what I should be doing. I know it. I did it. Like, yeah. And it's still a struggle for me. So 
I, I bring this up because I'm sure there's plenty of other people listening who can sympathize with that. It's not easy. Like what we're saying is not simple, but it's almost necessary. Like you almost have to put your foot forward and prioritize certain things like that mm -hmm. because if not, you're, you're just falling behind. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. Another question here on, on the sales side is what, what does your ideal seller look like? You now train a lot of people. You have people under you that train tons of people. Mm. What are you looking for in a seller? Like somebody listening right now, what are some telltale signs that maybe they should go pick up the phone? Maybe they should go. Like a sales person? Yeah, like a seller, like a, just a stone cold seller. Um, it's funny you use the word seller. We use, we use closer. closer. Everyone has different, different yeah. terminology. Um, the, the biggest thing is like, like the single biggest thing that I hire, I hire a lot of young kids, like like 18 years old, 19, 20, no experience, and they always crush it for me because I know how to hire, is uh, you have like personal like swagger. Like you, 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 you are not necessarily confident because confidence is earned, I think, and it's built over time. If you're 18, 19, it's hard to have that, but you have like this personal aura that's like, like I'm the man kind of thing. Um, the people that don't have that always, always bomb. But the people that do, bro, you can teach sales easy. Sales is a skill. The part that you can't teach is the intangible. Like, oh, I'm going to do the right thing. I have this personal aura. I'm not going to get upset when I hear no's. Um, or like, oh, I didn't close a deal. It's going to ruin my week. Like, you got to be mentally strong, um, have a little bit of, of confidence, a little bit of swagger, um, and then obviously the, the work ethic. But those, to me, we don't hire based off of that stuff anymore. That's like a prerequisite. It's like yeah. it's like being a man and making money. It's a prerequisite. You have to, you know. So I look for I look for those. Yeah, I mean that's spot on. And like we have two different sales experiences. Very different. Yeah. I work in corporate America, big tech sales, like huge ticket items, longer sales cycles, and more corporate. You're looking for hungry hustlers who you can get around, mold, teach, and like. Just kind of release them out there and let them go yeah. to town. And 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 I and I love that. And I agree with the swagger thing. And I always relate things to sports. Mm -hmm. Like I had, a, I had a sports background. A lot of killers, closers, sellers that I meet now have sports backgrounds. And I think it comes with the territory. That swagger, like you gotta look good. You're on the field, you're in front of people. You carry yourself different than somebody who never exposed themselves like that. I agree a million forward. percent. It's the same, it's the same kind of um I say all the time, sales is a performance-based sport. And I say sport for a reason because it's competitive. Yeah. Like it's player versus player. Um, if if you aren't performing, you're going to get replaced by somebody, you know? <laughs> yep. But that's that's the beauty of it. So I, I agree 100%. Yeah. And I, I, I love that example. Like it's kind of like a minor league baseball system. Like if you're not producing, you're done. And you There's just get cycled out. Eight other people hungry as hell young ready to get up there and take your spot every day yeah and it's competitive like that's just the nature and that's why sales isn't for everybody like for people listening don't feel like you need to go be a seller there's all these other jobs in the world for a reason but if you're listening and you're getting a little motivated or you're feeling a little bit different about what you're hearing mm -hmm. maybe you should go try and get into something like closer cartel and, and learn these things and i think that's a great segue what made you start Closer Cartel? Like you were successful in sales. You already kind of knew what you were doing. What made you want to pass that down and teach others? What's the natural like evolution of when you get really good at something? Um, bro, I was a 20, 21 year old kid. I'd been in business for two years and I was making like 20, 30 K a month. That's like crazy from yeah. like, especially where I'm from. That's nuts. So um, it was two options. I wanted to make more money, obviously. And I wanted to expand my my reach and have a bigger impact. So it was either start a sales agency because you always go off of the skill you have. It was either sales agency or teach. And I tried the agency because I didn't want to go full guru and build a course and all this stuff because there's like this negative like connotation to it. But bro, the sales agency, I was working with clients that like they would fuck up their marketing and then it would be on us because obviously we're dependent upon leads coming in to actually perform our jobs. And I was sick of relying on other people. So I was like, you know what? Let's do something we can control. Let's teach people the skill. And we started like this little thing called like the sales training group. I think we had like 30 people join the first month at like $1,000. So I was like, oh, people people definitely want this. It was before we even closed our cartel. Um, and those guys got amazing results. We had I hired coaches and then it grew into what it is today, which is 3,000 plus students. Um, this last month was our best, best month ever for students. We had kids... Like, I'll give you two examples. Two kids 
two like uh, brand new first month in sales. Eleven thousand dollars commission, seventeen thousand dollars commission. Yeah, I think I have that written down here actually. Yeah, a student in closer cartel made seventeen k in their first month. Yeah, first month ever. So he joined. Amazing. We taught him sales. He got an offer via what we teach, or either one of the offers we just drop in their lap and made seventeen grand. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, and and then those are the new kids, the experienced kids. Like one today made eight eight thousand dollars today. Um, I saw multiple that were thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars commission in a month so yeah <laughs> how, how does that make you feel like you're changing good. these people's very lives. good like because i like i don't i don't um ever want to build a company that isn't results driven you know what i mean that's all i care about is results and i see people like if you have a course people just naturally talk shit or whatever you know yeah. um but no one has the results we have and that's like the single thing we focus on so like i can never understand the like oh but you sell a course oh you're a scammer oh why do you charge for this bro I charge because you pay me, it's 3,000 bucks right now. That's all it is. You pay me three grand and your first month you can make $17,000. Like, that's crazy. That's unheard of in, in info products. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a great ROI on that three grand if you yeah. go out and get it. And like, I have here too, like written down, one of your students made 65K in one month. Josh, like, yeah. You guys know what 65 grand in one month is? That was is? his third month ever. Like, Come on, like that's crazy money. Yeah. That that's gotta feel amazing, like for you. Like I I also like we're we're very relatable the more we talk. And my first businesses were on Discord. Mm -hmm. I built three brands on Discord, ran them, had one become really successful. Unfortunately, COVID blew it up, but mm -hmm. grew it like six figure business, awesome. And then a, a facet of that was the mentorship portion. And the mentorship portion portion was the money printer mm. because there's no overhead. I'm just teaching. Yeah. It wasn't the most profitable part of the business, but it was the most fulfilling for me. Like I look back and I was like, I enjoyed nothing more than spending four or five hours with an individual and having them reach out to me at the end of the month and be like, I paid you four hundred dollars for the month and I made forty five hundred dollars profit. Like it was good. Thank you. Like I needed that money. Like my family needed that money. Like I just bought a new car. Like all of these things, mm -hmm. you're you're in a you're in a lucky spot, man. Like that's such a nice thing to be able to to be a part of. Like you're literally changing these individuals' lives, and I I I'm envious of you. I guess from that <laughs> perspective, I would say. Well, thank you, bro. Like, it just, feels good. I mean, that's that's like I I don't I don't love coaching. Like in all real, like I would rather stay in my own head than try to tell other people what to do, but. When we do it, and then kids, like you said, hey, I bought my mom a house, or hey, I am um, paying my mom's bills, or I bought a car, or whatever, that, that feels good. And uh, you've talked about it on multiple other podcasts. You're very close with your mom. You moved her down here to Miami. Yep. How how awesome was that? Like that was the coolest thing. How awesome was that? It was the coolest thing so far. She's still, bro. She's still like, this, if this gives you an idea of like how messed up stuff was when I grew up, she is still doesn't believe that it's real and is like I texted her two days ago and was like hey like do you have any like dreams or goals or anything that you want to go do like you tell me and like I'll fund it like whatever it is and she's like honestly like I never even like thought of that and I'm like what do you mean like she's like you're she this is exactly what she said she said you have lived more in your lifetime than I have in 47 years of mine and I was like, well, it's time to start living, mom. Like, like we're good. You're good. You need to go do things. And she's still trying to get used to it, you know? So uh, it was. it's the best thing I've done, 100%. I don't know if anything will beat that. I think that's the most um, sort of admirable thing you can do as a man is, is take care of your, your people, whether it's your mom, your dad, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that was that was the best. Yeah, and I mean, now you're here, you, you, you'll be able to sympathize with this comment. But for me, I've, I've grown up in Miami. So... I'm a little bit ignorant to like other people living in other states who, Yeah, I mean, I wake up, like I see Rolls Royces on the road. Like I, I've seen a Lambo and I think a funny situation was I was at the Orange Bowl two years ago and we're in the suite section. It was a corporate thing and I'm sitting there in the line and I'm wearing a Kith t-shirt and the lady behind me is like, hey, like cool shirt. I just took my son there. We're from Kentucky. And I was like, <laughs> oh, awesome. And she's like, it's crazy. I've never seen a Lamborghini before and I've seen three today. And I'm thinking like this lady's probably in her forties and fifties. And I don't even look twice. Like when a Lambo drives by, yeah. but we're just, 
a little bit ignorant to we live in this like bubble, this fake world. Miami is a very <laughs> is a very bubbly place. Um it's just brothers, massively different ways of life, you know? Like I didn't see any of that stuff till I came here. Like like honest to God, me grow and I should probably talk about this more. I feel like it make me more, more relatable. I grew up until the age of 18 and all that I was like used to, normal stuff was like hunting, fishing, going outside, sports, and like manual labor. All I knew. This is my whole life. It was literally everything. Here's a good question for you. You were getting on your mom about not having dreams. Yeah. Before you got out of where you lived, did you have dreams? Did no, you I did. Have, like big aspirations. I did. I always did. Because, like? bro, like I, I the I was furious every day of like being poor. I hated it. Like it felt bad. I was embarrassed. Like, because like I'm from a poor area, but there were kids at school that had like nice stuff or their parents made, I'm guessing now probably like 100 grand a year or 150 grand or, or a little bit more. And they would, there was this like, place in so we didn't even live in town so we are in a small town but we lived out of the town in the country so it was like extra country but like in town there's this like hill that all the nice houses are on and i was always so envious and jealous and i was like man these kids have cars they have phones they have like not insane lives at home like all this stuff i was jealous and and upset about it but it made me so mad i was like i was like fuck this i'm not going to deal with this anymore and that's when it started to click especially as you get older and more mature, like from probably like 13 and, and up, I was like, yeah, I'm not, not doing this. So I just started watching movies and I was like, I want to be that guy. Like Batman, Bruce Wayne, I want to be that guy. Jordan Belfort, I want to be that guy. Like everything I saw is like, I want to be those guys. And then even guys online, like the YouTubers and whatever. And now a lot of them are my friends. Like, like uh, Luca Nets owns percentage of my company. I watched him on YouTube when I was like 18 and was like, man, I want to be like that guy. He's in LA in the hills with Supreme Patty and doing all this stuff. And then like E-Man, I, I watched E-Man when I was like 16, 18, whatever. Yeah. Man, I want to be like that guy. He's like building a business. And now like I just texted him yesterday. I'm going to see him in Dubai in September. Like Sebastian Gorgiao, uh, another one. Yeah. We're like all these people and, and you, you see it and you're like, I want to be like that. And then if you do the right stuff. And I guess if you work hard enough, then they're your friends. And and it's crazy. Sebastian came to my mom's house and and uh, had breakfast with us. Like crazy, bro. That's, like that kid got me into business. I told it, him that. Has it set in yet that you're part of that circle now? Like so, officially? So we, we, it's weird. It is weird. Um, I get grouped in. The, the two that we get grouped in the most with, like on like Twitter of like, hey, follow these three people. It's Tate, E-Man, and me. That's that's who I always am in the, grouped with. And I'm not saying like I am those people Pretty by, good by any means. <laughs> Pretty good group. Um, Tate blocked me on Twitter for whatever reason. So <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Maybe but, not a bad thing. Yeah, but like, bro, it's 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 surreal, you know? But I mean, that's a everybody listening, that's a testament to, bro, I'm nobody I'm from middle of nowhere. <laughs> I don't even know what ethnicity I am. I don't have family. I don't know anything. My mom, he's laughing. My mom looks like him. He's blonde, blue eyes, pale. And then I look like this. What am I? I don't fucking know. It's like, damn, bro. If I can do this shit, so can you guys. Hey, if you're not motivated, like, come on. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I, I guess this is a funny place to ask this question I have written down here. You wrote, you will take home $3 million this year and you feel poor. Why do you set such high expectations for yourself and how does that impact your success? Because, I mean, a lot of people are going to sit on here and be like, what the hell does that mean? $3 million in a year? Some people won't even sniff 25% of that in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You say that makes you feel poor. Why do you set such high standards for yourself? Because that's how you reach high goals, you know? The downside of that, though, is you're not happy. Like, I'm, I'm not happy with where I'm at at all. Like fulfillment and happiness are two different things. I don't think you should optimize for happiness. I think that's ridiculous. I think you should opti optimize for fulfillment. A good day's work and like going to the gym and fighting and then eating clean and coming home makes me feel fulfilled. Like I feel good when I do that. Happy, I don't think happy is like a real state. I think it's just like a fleeting thing, whatever. But like, for example, that, bro, three million. And this sounds ridiculous, especially like where I'm from and, and people will hear this and again, they'll get mad and they'll, they'll put their identity on me, whatever. That's so little in the game that we're playing. There are guys that are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year in this space in similar industries. And I'm doing $3 million a year. Like, what do I have to be happy about? You know, like 
It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. It's literally 1.5% of what some people do. Some people do that a day, like literally a day, a month. I know personally guys that do that a month. That's horrible. <laughs> So I can't, I can't be happy with that because my, my goals are so much bigger than that. Um, three million is like tiny little slim piece of what I want, you know? So it's like, it's like what's, what's that saying? Like you aim for the moon and you land among the stars. Like it's the same mentality. It's how you are successful in life. You aim for a billion. Oh, I only hit $250 million. Bro, she still got two fifty. Two hundred fifty you know? million. Like, come uh, on. But I would probably still be mad then. It's just, it's just how it is. Yeah, I mean... Another thing that I had, I, I did my, I did some good homework here. You did. We're segueing into thing. You said, you, you think you're going to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars by 30. Yeah, I know I will. How? Like, what is going to separate the Luke that I'm sitting in front of right now doing 3 million a year from the Luke that I hopefully am still talking to when you're 30 and you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars? What will be the catalyst for that? Selling a company. So, Closeify, our software company, I think I have a good gut feeling. And I've talked to a bunch of smart people. I talked to a guy that um, I'll just say who it is because he's he's awesome. Umar Sharaf. He's a big trader. Mm -hmm. He used to live in Miami. Lives in Dubai now. He has a trading software. He has. I think he said. I know he's worth a hundred million dollars. I don't know if he got a hundred million dollar offer. I think he might have said that on his on his software. Um, or it's worth a hundred million just with the revenue, whatever. Does he want to sell it? Because my my goal to him was, or what I talked, we got on a call and I was like, hey, like I want to sell this company. I want to build it up. I want to sell it for a hundred million. He's like, why? I was like, well, like I want a hundred million dollars. Like I want to cash out and do that. He's like, okay, what are you going to do after? I was like, well, probably build something bigger. He's like, okay, why don't you just build that thing to be bigger? And I was like, I didn't think about that. Like, <laughs> that's a good point. So that's the one thing. Um, and it'd be cool if, I'm saying this on this podcast right now, and it is this company, and I am right. I think I'm going to sell Closeify for, um, is that nine figures? Uh, I'm bad at math, but yeah. Is that nine figures? That's, yeah, six yeah. is 109. Yeah, three so plus I, three I, plus will, three. I will sell Closeify for nine figures. All right. Well, I got to execute we gotta, we right. Make sure we clip that, because if he does sell it, then we'll redo another episode to celebrate a hundred million will. dollar exit. I got to execute. Like, it, like, it's cool to say this, right? And it sounds cool. Like, oh, bro, I'm going to have a hundred million... It's hard work, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm going to have to evolve so much as a business owner and as a person to get to that level. I'm going to have to learn a lot. I'm going to have to sacrifice a lot, and I'm, I'm prepared to do so. But I think it's all about vehicles, right? If you have the intangibles and you have the skill and you have the work ethic and all these things that you know you have to have, but if you have the right vehicle, you can do it. And SaaS is a high multiplier. Sales SaaS is the highest leverage industry for a SaaS company to be sold in. So like a sales force or something. Yep. Write me a check, buddy. You know. Yeah, that, that's the, that's my world. That's my corporate world. I yep. sell SaaS products. Your company like, might buy my shit. Who yeah, knows? maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe my company will be the one that closes it, and that would be absolutely insane. Yeah. What What do you think needs to happen in between now and then for Closeify? Because I, I saw the software. I think it's a genius concept idea to the point. I'm like, not to toot your horn here, but I saw it. I work my W two in sales. I was like, this is cool for someone like me. I well, just, thank you. Maybe I just want to load a profile up there, fifty go, bucks. Go a make month. one, bro. It's yeah, cheap. <laughs> fifty bucks a month, and like what? Maybe I get a handful of companies that want to hire me out, and I'll do work here and there and make some side money. Yeah, I'll make more than fifty dollars a month. Yeah, I can probably guarantee you that. So, like, what do you think is going to change between now and then to get that company to be worth that nine-figure exit? So I know, or obviously things change, but I think I know what we need to do. One, we're going to start small in like the coaching consulting space. Um, like Cole Gordon, for example, smashed this space. I think they do $30 million a year. So that gives me an idea of what we can do in this space as well. You always got to start small. You can't go to the whole market, right? So if they can do $30 million, let's say we do 15 With a SaaS company and you do $15 million ARR, that is a massive, that's a hundred million dollar company already, right? So yeah, that's step one. Step two is we get out of the small game of like coaching, consulting agencies, all this stuff, and we go corporate. So for example, people like you yeah. and other big tech, like SaaS, um, cyber, whatever companies, we can charge a lot more to them and there's a lot bigger of a market. So it's the same software. It's the same strategy. It's a marketplace to hire sales reps but we'll just go to a different customer that can pay us more and we can charge you guys more. Like what would you pay to get access 
you think every month to like the best companies that are hiring for sales roles? I mean, it'd be, I mean, I would pay hundred, like a couple hundred hundreds bucks. of dollars. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know what the industry pays. You can go get an entry level sales job at any of these big companies that you've named, and you're going to start out at 140 to 170 grand with base and commission included if you get to 100% of your number. Yep. <laughs> it's invaluable if you're, I mean, you're, well, basically you building, build, you're basically building the LinkedIn of sales. Like that's the how you build world. companies like this, right? You, you, you are not going to get to that number unless it is so much of a no-brainer that people don't even think twice. Like Zoom, you ever think twice about paying 10 bucks for Zoom? No, no it's, it's so necessity. useful. Yeah, it's a necessity. So imagine we make Closeify a necessity to get hired in sales with vetted companies. You don't got to worry about it. And this is just talking about the sales rep side. That's like cheap MRR. It's like 50, 100 bucks a month, whatever we scale it to. 100,000 users would be pretty achievable in, in the sales rep space, right? That's a lot of money in itself, right? Yeah. That's, that's What is $100,000 times 100? Is that a million? Right? I'm so bad at math. Uh, 10 million. I could barely do basic additions. So. Is it 100 million? That's not No, it's 10 million. I think yeah. it's 10 million. 10 million. We'll that's, go with 10. It's 10 so million. So we, we get 100,000. I'm not good at math. I failed every math class I was ever in. Um, what is it? I expose myself. Yeah, 10. Look at that. Yeah, fuck you, math teachers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, ten, like, bro, even that, that's $10 million a month. It's all, just from the sales rep side. So there's a couple ways we could go. We could go only try to monetize the sales rep side. Currently, the big money is going to come from the business side. So it's like $4,600 a year right now to hire four reps, which is a massively underpriced deal. Yeah. And we guarantee performance. So if they don't work, you replace. If that doesn't work, we refund you. There's no risk. So that will eventually go to like 10, 15K, right? And then when we get out of that, we can go to a, an Oracle or a, a Cisco or whoever else. And all I have to do is the Amazon hiring route of like, oh, I don't know this industry because I never sold in there. Okay, I just go find the best guy and pay him very well when he comes works for us. Like Amazon logistically, that's their moat is their logistics. They can get this to you in a day and no one else can, right? Well, how the fuck did they do that? Did Bezos know logistics and shipping? No. He went and hired Walmart's best guy and stole him. And then that guy built out all their logistics. So I'm simply going to go to a Salesforce, to an Oracle, to a Cisco, whatever it is. And I'm going to find the best guy. And we're going to steal him. And he's going to build it out. And then we go to enterprise. We go to, to corporate. Big money. Big, yeah. big money. I actually have that written down here somewhere saying that your favorite, one of your favorite things about making money is the ability to be able to pay good people to teach you high-level skills. Tennis. Exactly. I made a TikTok. I made a TikTok earlier. I played tennis yesterday. Um, I, I was decent. How good was I, Jacob? Was I decent? I was all right. Ah. <laughs> Realistic answer. He didn't, look too, he didn't look too confident right there. Yeah, he's, he's being mean. I was pretty good. Uh, I, scored, I scored on Jonathan. I, I've never held a rack in my life. So... But anyway, I want to get good at tennis. What do I do? I go find a coach and I pay him. That's simple. Everyone overcomplicates this, right? MMA, I wanted to get good at fighting. I went once, I was horrible, and I was like, man, I want to get good at this. This would be fun. So I paid a coach every single, uh, three times a week for a year and a half. I went every single week. I did not miss. And I paid him 60 bucks. I paid him, I did the math, it was about 10 grand a year for an MMA coach. I'm pretty damn good at MMA <laughs> now. Because I did it so much and I paid an expert. He's a pro. He's an actual pro. Uh, the shooting stuff. I grew up with rifles. I was naturally good at shooting just because I was a little kid with guns. But I was like, I don't really know how to do some of the special forces stuff. I don't really know how to clear rooms as well. Like, how do I learn that? Well, I called the gun range and I said, hey, I want to learn this. Like, who can train me? Oh, well, we have this guy that used to be in SWAT and cleared houses all the time. So I pay him 200 bucks every time I go. And I've gotten really good at that. The next thing is going to be racing. When I buy a Porsche, I'm going to go pay an actual racing driver to teach me how to race. Whatever it is, bro. Tennis, piano, racing, business. Business is the best one. Oh, I want to be a better copywriter? I go pay a copywriter. I want to um, learn how to blow up my brand? I'm going to a mastermind that I paid 50 grand for in September. That's going to teach me all kinds of stuff, right? Like everything you want to learn is literally on the other side of a little bit of money. It doesn't even have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a course. Like courses are cool. But like even better than a course, a lot of times is just paying someone for their time. The reason that's hard is because not a lot of people want to sell their time, right? Yeah. Or it's going to be expensive. But it it is real and it happens. Like that's how. So 
Like, I don't, I don't really remember exactly what you said for your first point, but like learning new things, like, bro, that's exactly how. Yeah, just the the ability to money gives you access to almost anything. Yep. When it comes to learning skills, like I think back and and I was like, oh, I want to do something myself. Like I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Facebook ads. I'll figure it out. I didn't figure it out. Like, you usually don't. You <laughs> often don't. Yeah, didn't figure it out. What did I do? Pay somebody. Figured it out immediately. And like now I've had success where there's been certain skills or things I know I needed, but. I didn't have the time or energy to to put to like learn it. Mm -hmm. So what have I done? I pay for a mentorship. It cuts this. It cuts the time down. Time is the most valuable thing we have, right? And if you really want to think like rich people, and you're like, oh, time is money, you don't really understand that until you have money. But once you do, it's much smarter to go pay a thousand dollars to learn a skill in an hour than learn it by yourself in ten hours. Because that's nine hours that you get back <laughs> in your life that you'll never have again. You know, it's like the two weeks I spent looking for a notebook. Uh, not going to get Wasted that time, not going to get that time back. Yeah. But like I look at, cause I think paid mentorship gets a little bit of hate sometimes. Like, Oh, like why are you paying that person? Like, who see, and it's funny because everyone that says that is poorer than the people and my friends that do every one of my friends. Have you bought a course or mentorship or anything yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Every one of my friends that makes a lot of money. So my little friend group, even in justice building ranges up to $350,000 a month income. Okay. Every one of us has bought coaches, courses, help, consulting, masterminds. I'm in two masterminds now that cost me, I didn't think about that, it cost me 75 grand a year. I didn't even think about that until now. One's 2,000 a month. One is going to be the same, but it was 25K to go to this event. So 75K a year. Why? Because, bro, I can learn stuff that will make me tens of millions of dollars for 75 grand. Are you kidding me? So everyone that hates on it, it's poor. <laughs> They're poor. Like, oh, you you buy courses. I, I get TikTok. TikTok is like AIDS for like stupid comments. Yeah. I just get like, oh, bro, of course you have a course, don't you? Yeah, no shit, because I can teach you how to make $100,000 a year for the rest of your life. You think I'm going to do that for free? Like, no. <laughs> no. Obviously no. not. But the guys who do pay, they're set. They're never going to struggle, you know? So, oh, well, like let stupid people be stupid, but yeah, no, I mean, it's cheat code. I'm an advocate for it. Like my first mentorship was a $500 mentorship and it was, I'm into shoes. I'm into sneakers. That was my first business right out of high school. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I wanted to be able to buy cool shoes and not have to pay resale for it. What did I do? Okay. I got to go find the way to get them yep. and built the first company selling sneakers, made a lot of money doing it, parlayed that into a discord group all around sneaker bots. I didn't really know how to use the bots. I just knew that there was money in renting them. So I built the marketplace, but I'm like, all right, I want to learn to use them. Paid $500, 500 bucks. Somebody spent one month with me and taught me the ins and outs of everything. I turned that $500 into just off profit of using a bot to buy shoes, probably 80 to 100 grand. And then I went and taught that same style of yep. course to other people and made 40 grand with zero dollar overhead for two years and imagine if you were too scared to invest the 500 500 dollars turned into like 150 grand for me yeah. like i mean come on i mean we're talking about rois here like find me a better one than that there like, isn't a better one I, I literally made tiktok today it was like the best investment you can ever make it's not crypto it's not stocks it's not real estate it's in yourself i want to be better at this thing i know i need to be better at this thing to make more money okay go work a job Go work at McDonald's, whatever the fuck you have to do, and then just go pay somebody and stop being a little bitch about spending money. And then it'll come back to you in like tenfold, and then you repeat, and then it'll come back to you a hundredfold, and then you repeat, and then you're a millionaire. And then you're like, oh shit, how did this happen? <laughs> like it's it's not that it's not that difficult. Yeah. Uh, another, I mean, shit. I'm giving myself you some got good props notes. Here. Five pieces of advice you gave people free on Twitter were success has nothing to do with skill. We talked about that a little bit. You don't need to be an entrepreneur to be successful in sales. Mm -hmm. Stop being a bitch, like you just said. Yep. <laughs> Leave your hometown. You did. 10x your input and your output will 10x. Unpack that a little bit for people. Well, those listening. are those I like giving simple advice because you give high level advice and people don't understand it. Yeah. But you give simple advice. For example, when we teach people, one way we teach people to get clients for sales is to just send video DMs on Instagram. It's tried. It's true, true, it works, okay? 
It's no craziness. There's no guesswork. You do this, you do this, it'll work. The thing is, it's like a 1% response rate. It's like cold email. Yep. Does it mean it doesn't work? No, it just means you have to send 100 of those to get one to work. That's just the nature of business, right? Every time someone gets on a call and is like, oh, this doesn't work. My only question is, how many did you send? And without fail, it's like, oh, I sent five. I sent 10. And the solution is usually, okay, do 10 times more of that and then come back and tell me. And they never come back because they always get the client. So that's good advice for whatever you're doing, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm only like, I'm not putting any muscle on at the gym. Okay, 10x what you're doing, okay? Oh, um, whatever it is, bro. Do more and more will come out. Like inputs equal outputs in, in an unequal proportion. So you put 10x in, you might get 100x out, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. Um, the, the other ones like, don't be a bitch. That's like, <laughs> that's like a prerequisite for everything. Like how are you going to do anything if you're scared, you know? Fear, I think, is the biggest thing that disables people from getting anywhere in life. Like if I, bro, if I was too scared to leave my hometown and go to college to get internet access, you wouldn't know who I am. That one decision, if I was fearful that one time, every single interaction, branch, whatever, of everyone that's ever known me would not know me at all, at all, wouldn't exist. So it's crazy. It's like think about things. that. Fear, fear was the one thing that you had to get over. And I'm scared. But I was like, you know what? I've, I've got to do this. Um, what were what some of the other ones? The other ones were... Uh, 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 you don't need to be an entrepreneur. Success has nothing to do with skill. Were the other two. Yeah. Um, I, are you sure success has nothing to do with skill or, or was it hard work? I think it was hard work. Yeah. So So the reason I said that is like... Bro, you take, I worked really, really hard as a teenager and I did uh, construction. You know how much money I made? $8 an hour. Less than you're making now. Yeah, $8 <laughs> an hour. And you look at like these construction workers and bro, especially the, the Mexican guys, they work their asses off all day, all night, right? To take care of the people. They work harder than anyone and they don't make money. Why? It's because money is not given to you because of how hard you work. It's not. It's, it's unfair if you want to call it that, but you need to understand the game so you can play the game. Money follows value and it follows what people want. So for example, like I posted a picture of that Russian girl on Twitter, thousand likes. I post an actionable sales advice, five likes. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Am I going to bitch about the game or am I going to understand the game and go, you know what? Okay. If you, you people want this, I'll give you what you want. And then I grow and then I benefit from that. Right. The, the hard work is like, oh, I'm just going to post more sales videos and content. No one cares. You got to give people what they want and you got to create value. That's it's how everything works, right? Yeah. Does anyone does anyone think that like 6ix9ine, the rapper, is working harder than those guys? No. Why does he have more money? Because he's creating a disproportionate amount of value or enter entertainment is a valuable thing. Entertainment, people want it. So he's paid in proportion to it. It's not how hard you work. So that was another one that's like simple, straightforward advice. And then what was the, the final one? Um, the oh, shit. <laughs> the final one was handwritten notes out here. Final one was you don't need to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, like it's not cut out for everybody, bro. <laughs> Shit's hard. Starting a business is hard. It's hard. <laughs> and, and most people will like try and fail and then they never do it again. They, they go get a job, whatever. When I think if they were smart, they would just understand th who they are as a person. Like what's your archetype as a person? Are you... Like I know this guy that's insanely smart would never be a good leader or entrepreneur of himself. But if you put him, I'm going to hire him as a COO. Probably I used to work with him. He's like kind of autistic. Like he's so good at like operations and just everything, but without leadership, it all fizzles. He needs someone that can like paint the picture and be like, we're going this way. And he's yeah. gonna be like, okay, I'll build the machine to get there. Right. You got to understand who you are as a person. Not everyone is cracked out to be an entrepreneur. Yep. That's why I love sales. Like, bro, are you, you said yourself, business is hard. You had businesses, and I'm assuming because that you're working in sales now that they didn't they didn't blow up and yeah, whatever, right? They, they had That's their time. That's 90% of businesses. <laughs> I think 99%, 99. honestly. So does that mean you have to be a failure? No, no, you're not a failure. You're just not cut out for that, which is fine. Yeah. I'm not cut out to go be an NBA player. <laughs> I'm not 6'8", black guy. Like, I, I can't do that, right? Like, there, it, it, <laughs> he's laughing at me. Like, it's reality. <laughs> I am cut out to, I speak well, 
I was good at sales, obviously. And what can I do with that? I got to know myself. Well, uh, I could probably build a great personal brand because I have the look. I can go do cool stuff, whatever. So I know what I can do. But if I'm like this like little short, ugly guy, I'm probably not going to try to become famous. Yeah. Like, it's not going to work. I know who I am. What am I going to do? I'm probably going to go do something that fits my skills and my traits and my archetype. So like people are like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur because it be sounds reali- cool. Be realistic. <laughs> on fucking Instagram. You don't actually. This shit's hard. It sucks sometimes. It's hard. Like I, I am responsible for like 10 people's payroll. Yep. If I mess up in a month, I still have to pay them. Yeah. Does that mean I make money? No. I'm the last person that eats. That's how it works when you are the guy, you know? Yep. So much better than that is go learn valuable skills and work with a great company. Go be a sales guy. That's fine. You might make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Like that's, that's great. That, that, that's a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Like, bro, it's a lot of money. Most entrepreneurs, people don't understand this. You do a million dollars a year. Most people call themselves a millionaire. That million dollars is either on a good side, 50% profit, yeah. plus then you pay tax. So that's just business profit, then tax, 30% if you were set up the right way. So you keep what, 300,000 of that? You could go do similar as a sales rep and you don't got to do any of the other stuff. So that's that's where that one comes from. Yeah, and a little bit back, you made a small point, but I think it's a good topic. What do you think about gamifying life? Like, I, so I think have, you're an advocate. Wait, have you for seen that. our? Yeah, I think you're an advocate for that. Like, so we we have an event coming out about this. Um, like, no, a, I, I like a whole event. I have not seen that. So I I I said as a joke. One time, I think just out loud, I was like, "Life is a video game," and I think I was like with somebody, and they were like, "That's really good." And I was like, "What do you mean?" They're like, "You should you should do something with that." And then, so I've just been repeating it and like putting it on Twitter and whatever. So we're going to have a whole event about it. But I, I view life as a video game, bro. I view myself. Do you watch anime? Yep. You an anime, anime guy? Okay. You've seen Naruto, obviously. Okay. 100%. The coolest thing in life and in all of human history, think of the Bible, think of Star Wars, think of Lord of the Rings, think of Naruto, think of anything. Movies is the, the hero's journey. Yep. You start here, you go up. That's the only thing that like is like tried and true throughout every story we have right and if that's the case you gotta like kind of think what what else is like that video games movies media stories fiction your life is the same way i literally look at my life like i'm from third person perspective and like i saw joe rogan say this he's like live your life like a documentary crew is following you around all the time i love that quote. you gotta live like your life is a video game because it is bro this is GTA. Yeah. This is literally GTA. Miami's pretty damn. You're close. telling me. Isn't the next GTA in Miami? Yes, it is. Yeah. There so it is. we're we're for this event, we're actually gonna put me in GTA and it's gonna be animated. And it's it, there's a, we got some crazy stuff coming. Dude, that's awesome. But bro, we're in GTA. I can literally go do whatever I want right now. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing stopping me from doing whatever I want in Miami. If I want to go to the strip club right now, I could. If I want to go have a five-star $2,000 dinner, I could. If I want to go race Ferraris up the road, I could. Go shoot guns. Whatever I want to do, I can do. And people have this weird... I don't know why. I think, again, it comes back to fear. But they have this weird thing of like, oh, no, I can't do that. Why? (laughs) Why? Who says you can't? Nobody says you can't. The only thing that says you can't is your own like limitation in your mind. And as soon as you get over that and you're like, my life is a video game. My life is a movie. You start to look at stuff differently. Like, bro, I'm sitting here right now doing a podcast with you. These guys are watching me. This is going to go on, 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 not TV, but like social media. Maybe on TV. You know, Everybody's <laughs> going to see this. This is a video game. I'm like being interviewed like I'm a famous person. Like what? It's, yeah. it's a video game. I can go tomorrow, go shoot guns, go to the beach, go fly to China in the same day if I really wanted to. There's nothing stopping me from doing whatever I want. And I want people to understand that because especially you're like, oh, well, I need money. Then go make some fucking money, bro. <laughs> go make some money. There's nothing stopping you from doing so. Nothing at all. And and like I, I love that I come from where I come from because I can say it from personal experience. Bro, I come from nothing. Literally nothing. It's not one of these made up stories to sell you a course. Literally nothing. I had... When I moved to college, no money. When I dropped out of college, I was negative in my bank account. So literally zero, like decimally the number zero. And I now have made millions of dollars at 23 years old. Why? 
because I fucking thought I could. <laughs> that's it. Like, that's the only reason. Obviously, you got to learn the skills and the tactics. And you got to do the right thing. But that shit's already out there. Like, it all exists. Other people have done it before. So you can kind of replicate and just do it yourself, right? Yeah. It's been documented. People have done this. The only thing that stops you is this. is like, one, can I do it? Two, do I know how to do it? And do I actually want to get out of my way and let myself do it? So long answer, but like, yeah, you're, bro, your life is a video game. And yeah. sooner you believe it, then the crazier <laughs> shit gets. And we really came full circle here. I mean, our first comments that we made right when we started filming were about mindset. And then we just came back here and kind of tied it all together. And life literally is a video game. Like you can. And I, I think now more than ever with the ability to access the internet, and I'm very sensitive to there is still people who can't access the internet. And I'm proud to work at a company that's trying to change that actively. Mm -hmm. And I think over the next 20 years, it will change. And I'm really excited for the product of generations that we're going to have coming out when this is true, because the internet gives you access to anything, like literally whatever you can learn any skill for free. You yeah. can interact. I mean, look at this podcast. Perfect example. I had zero personal brand, zero following, never filmed a podcast in my life. And over the last three and a half months with a little bit of hard work and just, just putting myself out there, like, okay to get a no, but why? Hold you just DM'd me. Yeah, just why hold back on messaging yeah. anybody? And now this is the 27th episode I've filmed, and I think the total following of all of my guests so far is over three and a half million. Like, how? Like, that was just... And just because you I, wanted to. I That's just why. wanted to do it. Like, <laughs> I literally woke up, and John here, he's been around me. I've always wanted to have a podcast because I could talk to a brick wall. So <laughs> literally a brick wall right behind you. Um, I could talk to a brick wall. So I was like, I always wanted to do this. And then I was like, and it's funny, we were on a golf trip in January and I was like, I'm going to commit to this. Like, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And it was end of January, February. I took like, I did some mentorship with some individuals, learned what the industry like needed. What are some things people look for? Launched August for, I mean, April 1st mm -hmm. and have not looked back. And now look where you're at. I'm, and I'm, if you keep your foot on the gas, bro, you might even not even have a job within 12 months dude i'm not stopping because it's 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 crazy it's been just only up and it's not because i'm doing anything special for someone listening i'm not paying for any guests i've not paid for a single guest to come on this show i am not paying for ads to push me out i i don't get a crazy amount of views and it's not a bottleneck like a guest is not going on and saying oh you don't get enough views i'm not joining there might be a handful yeah. but not the big ones i have had no problem locking in big guests like who yourself. else have you who, have you shot with casey adams was my first guest. oh fire um that was guest number one that was one of the people who mentored me and helped me get started another person on twitter clint murphy um he's built this whole entire like writing community mm -hmm. he's got like three hundred fifty thousand followers um who else has been big? I had my buddy El Mago on the show to talk about his cigar brand. Yeah. And like nobody crazy big, but like Dakota Robinson, another person who built a huge following on Twitter, 250,000 yeah, followers on Instagram, Twitter. Like these are bigger people who somebody in my shoes might have been like, oh, I'm not even going to waste time DMing them because they're not going to answer. They've all answered. They've all booked and we've all, and we filmed. And, yeah. it, and it comes down to like, who are you as like the, per like I show up on the podcast and all I ask my pitch is give me 45 minutes of your time and I'm going to put 10 hours of my time into highlighting you and your story. Great. Like I'll, I'll jump and you've on. You've done a great job. Yeah. Thank you, man. And like people jump on and then it'll end and they'll be like, dude, I wasn't expecting like a, a like a good episode like that. Like, thanks. You ask great questions. And like, I'm like, all right, like I can't stop now. Who's next? Like who else can I DM? Yeah. Who else can I get in front of? And it's not because I'm doing anything special. Bro, like, that's the nobody secret. Knew me. Like the the real secret to everything, and like I don't want to sound like guru y and, and cliche, is the the reason that it works is there's not a lot of people that just try things. Yeah. Like there is there is such a market for in anything of people that actually want to go put themselves out there and try that thing. Like there are things that are saturated and have competition. But simply trying and just going, oh, I could do that. Okay, let's go try. Yep. Let's go shoot 20 podcasts. Um, I'm sure you've seen this. Like Hormozy said, to have a top 1% podcast in the world, you shoot more than 20 episodes. Yep. Uh, because yeah. everyone quits before that. Mm. So now you're a top 1%. Like you statistically, you literally top have a top 1% yeah. podcast. 
And like me putting this on my channel, I have 17,000 subs, which is not a ton, yeah. but maybe it'll blow up and then you're tagged in it. And then boom, now you have viewers and it, bro, it's a spiral of, of success for everybody, but it all starts with like, oh yeah, like I could do that. Like just do things. Yeah. I was like, I, I'm pretty good at talking. Like I'm fine being uncomfortable. I'm fine putting myself out there and there's always motivation behind everything. Mm -hmm. My biggest regret, I started these companies. I had a lot of success. Granted, the bigger picture they weren't, but in the moment, I was, I mean, I thought I wasn't going to work for anybody. I'm making six figures across two brands. Yeah. I'm 20, 21. I'm like, dude, I'm done. I'm, I'm killing it. And it didn't work out, but the learning experience has got me to where I am right now. But my biggest regret was I didn't build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. I did it all under an alias on Discord. Nobody knew it was me. And by the time it was over, nobody cared that it was me. So I said, whatever my next idea is, I am not allowing myself to not have a personal brand attached to it yeah. because I'm bullish on having an online presence in the next Bro, 20 years. Bro, it's the most leveraged thing that you can have. That's why, like, if you look at my Instagram, like, it looks like an actual movie. <laughs> like, we put a lot of... Bro, I spent over 50 grand in, in Europe in two weeks to do cool shit to film it. One, to enjoy it. Like, it's yeah. not all for camera, but, like, if I'm going to do it, I might as well film it. Yep. And, like, it looks like a movie because how valuable that is like we're we're putting a lot of money into short form stuff right now that's why i wanted this in person so we can, yeah. we can clip these up um we are planning or it's planned it's already been put into action to have probably anywhere between 50 to 100 million views um a month on tiktok and we're gonna that's funnel amazing. those all to youtube that's the playbook how tate and eman and everybody else has blown up so same thing personal brand yeah no i mean i'm just getting started on this journey and it's been so crazy to learn and meet people and, and hear all these different ways. And it's cool to, to be a part of that now. Like it's a good way to network with people too. Like, dude, like you bio. would never ever get in a room with me if you were just like, Oh bro, can I buy you coffee? But you're like, Oh, let's shoot a podcast. Cause it's valuable to me. You dude, know? Now we spent two and a half hours here. I yeah. know you personally off camera. Like we've had these conversations and that's literally in my Twitter bio podcast host quotation networking at scale. That's Smart. my like that's my tag to it because it's what it is. And I have a great job. I'm not struggling. So there's no financial incentive. If if this does bring money in my pocket, great. That's not what I'm doing it for. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it one because I think it's awesome to be able to teach people and 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 give people access to cool information. But two, I want to meet cool people and like grow myself as a person. Yeah. What better way than to put myself under the hot seat, sit right in front of them and have to go back and forward in an hour long conversation. Yeah. Most people couldn't do that. There's no better way. And like, I was like, this is a no brainer. This is what I'm committed to. And it's funny, Casey, another buddy, Callum, another buddy, Diego, all big in the space. We're like, you know, this is a long game, right? And I go, yeah, right. Like we're going to be doing this 10 years later and we're all going to be talking still. And they're like, yes. And like, that's what it is. Like, Danny Miranda is a perfect example. He's on episode like... I want to go on a podcast with him. Dude, that's who's inspired me to be like this because I've watched tons of podcasts and it's cool. I get it. Ask the punchy questions. Get the clips. He asks very thoughtful questions. Like he may pause for 10 seconds to be like, okay, and then go deep. And it's not just the surface level. It's like, here's the question and here's five things under it that I want you to talk about. And I was like, okay, like that is a cool skill to have, to be able to communicate with it's people. It's valuable, bro. Because just like, like even myself, I'm not the best at articulating what's in my head, especially with all the stuff that's going on. But if you have someone who's a good host and can actually articulate questions in, in the right way, it brings out the, the best of people. So yep. it's, it's a very valuable thing. Yeah, no. And and that, that that was the challenge I did to myself. Like, hey, these people are going to give you their time. And time, like you said, very valuable. Mm -hmm. I need to be ready. Like, that's why I came with notes, ready to go. Spent the last three days watching all your clips, all your other podcasts, and trying to find what ways can I make things a little different? Where can I challenge him in certain ways? Because that benefits everybody. Like, now you might have said things that you haven't said on other podcast clips, you might have said things controversially or like positive. Oh, we haven't got we haven't got close to as controversial as <laughs> No, no. I've seen a few. I've seen a few. And I've seen I've seen a few that I was like, I'm gonna try and keep this business oriented so we don't go riffing off to the side. But like, dude, this that that was that's what got me here. And that's why that's why I came and I know we did a little riff here, but 
a way I like to wrap up every episode. I ask the same very simple question, okay. and I have gotten the craziest answers. Some people will say they're going on an ayahuasca retreat in Costa Rica in two weeks. Some people will tell me that they're eating steak for dinner tonight. But my question to you is, Luke, what are you excited about in the near future? Hmm. Like how near? What, however you want to interpret it. Near can be a year from now, a week from now, a month from now. Um, what is coming up in your life that you're excited about? Dubai is going to be awesome. I've never been to Dubai. I'm going to see some very, very cool high-level people. But the it's the same thing as usual is just growth. I'm I'm very excited to grow. And we've this has been a year of we had like some massive months at the beginning of the year, but it's been very like steady. And they're they're big months, but like there's been no massive growth. It's been a year of building. Um and my my friends laugh at me all the time, like building in silence. I never have said that. And it's like a meme now that like Luke is building in silence. <laughs> I've never said it. But um, it's been a year of building because I understand long term. If I want to make tens of millions of dollars, I have to build the right foundation and the right team. That's what we've done this year. So we've made a few plays that I, I can't talk about that are behind the scenes. But if they go right, and I'm very confident they will because we're in full, it's our thing. We're in full control of it. Um, it will change everything. We will be 100 times bigger than we are now. More people will see us. We'll make more money. Just everything will be at scale. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to see those come into fruition and all the hard work that we've done in the last the last year start to finally pay off because then the end of the year is always our, our biggest. So it's time to kind of reap what we've sowed. Yeah, dude, I'm really excited to be able to follow it now. And, and now I know on the inside who you are and I can be that much more excited when I see you be continuously successful. Thank you, bro. Um, and this has been an absolute pleasure. Like, where can people go find you? I want I want people to be able to go interact with yeah. you that watch uh, it. Luke Alexander on everything with two X's. So Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, everything. Awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Like, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Like, this has been an absolute pleasure. First in-person episode. Anybody listening, please drop some feedback. Tell us what you think about this episode like subscribe give it give us some love we're trying to grow here to keep getting amazing guests like luke on the show but dude absolute pleasure thank you brother